Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Saint Nightingale. In this tutorial video, I'm going to be showing you how to cut and sew a one-sided wing collar blouse. Let's go. So, first of what I did was to spread my brown paper on the floor um, using the um, paper tape to secure it on the floor firmly, um, as well as um, the area that I'm going to be working the pattern on. Then I picked my uh, measuring tape to um, get the center point of this paper that I'm going to be using to create my pattern. So I took my uh, measuring tape from the start point to the end point of this paper to get the center of um, the paper. So um, after placing this from the beginning to the end, I got 28. So I'm going to now mark um, 14, which is the um, half measurement for this paper right so i'm just doing this to get the center point i did this across the um paper that i'll be using to create this pattern then i picked my long ruler to now trace out the center points from um, start to end i mean all the markings i have done to get the center point of of this um paper i decided to pick my long ruler to just get the center point and the reason i'm doing it doing this rather is so that my measurement is as accurate as possible so what i did next was to pick up my measuring tape to get the back measurement the back measurement is 15 inches 15 divided by 2 is 7.5 i added half an inch extra allowance to get 8 inches and that is what i am marking now i'm going to do this for both sides of the division that i've created on the paper just so that i'm I can get as uh, all my measurements as accurate as possible so i'm going to the other part now and i'm going to also mark eight inches um from from the center point of the uh, markings that you can see um outwards so after this i picked up my ruler now to also connect these dots um you would know why i'm making this line this long um just go with me as we journey through this process so I've connected the dots on the on the first half. I'm doing that on the second half as well um, to create um, the shoulder measurement. I mean the wideness of the shoulder or the back measurement. So now I'm going to take out four inches um, from this excess, and I'm calling it excess because by the time I create that pattern, I need this uh, much space um, to be able to draft out my um, wing collar. So I am taking out four inches. From the upper part and i'm going to take my ruler again and connect these dots so i'm connecting from both parts of the division so i've connected the dots now so what i did next was to get the width of the shoulder measurement and i'm going to be using three inches but i added one inch sewing allowance inwards and outwards to get um, four inches. So after marking four inches for the um, width of the shoulder, I went ahead to mark the depth of what I am going to be cutting in for the V for the um, V shape that you, you had seen at the beginning of this video. So I'm going to be making use of seven inches, but then I added an extra inch allowance, half an inch allowance to get um, seven inches. So I took my measuring tape again to um, mark the four inches from where i'd marked that seven inches from um, upwards and downwards so that it's as equal as possible when i'm drawing my straight line from um, that point so i'm going to pick up my ruler now and draw connect the lines so i picked up my short ruler now to connect the dots which is where the um, v is going to be um, stopping so I moved to the other side. For the other side, I'm going to be using a smaller measurement. I'm going to be using two inches. So I added one inch sewing allowance to it and made it three inches. So the reason why that side is bigger than this side is because when the flap flaps over, I want this other side to be as wide as possible. So I'm going to take my short ruler now and I connect the dots from that point where I'd marked three inches down to where I'd marked seven inches on the other part. And you can see now we have the inverted V, which is how we're going to be able to walk to the top and get our wing collar. So afterwards, I took my measuring tape and went upwards to get my four inches four inches remember that we're working with four inches on that side marked it and then picked up the short ruler again and connected it from the shoulder upwards so after connecting this i went on to work on the lower body or the lower part of this dress which is to 
or this blouse which is to get the bust area the waist measurements and um, because this is a peplum blouse i won't be needing the hip measurements so i went on to mark the half length measurement the half length measurement for this pattern is 17 inches but i marked 18 inches um sewing allowance from the up and from the bottom part which is half an inch up and half an inch down so i marked 18 inches across all parts of this fabric or rather this pattern so 18 inches for the half length measurement i picked up my ruler again and then connected it i'm sewing a peplum blouse so um that is why i'm using this method of um, the shoulder to um, the half length measurement so afterwards, I went on to define um, the arm O. The arm O measurement for me is 10 inches, factoring the um, sewing allowance, half an inch sewing allowance up and half an inch sewing allowance down, which will bring us back to um, 9 inches. So I went on to also define the slope of the shoulder. I picked up my ruler and then defined that from both sides of the, of the pattern. After doing this now, I went on to also define the arm o, um, the arm o points and then took out half an inch from both sides and drew out the slope. I picked up my curve ruler now to define the arm o, and I did this for the other part of the pattern. I also picked up my um, curve ruler now to also properly define the arm o. Remember, the arm hole is not usually um, like a straight line. It has this curve, and that's what I'm, I'm doing now. So after doing that, now I went on to pick up my measuring tape to define the bust measurement. The bust measurement I'm going to be making use of is 10 inches, which gives me 40 inches for the bust. But then I added 2 inches sewing allowance on both sides and half an inch sewing allowance for the darts that I'll be creating on the fabric and then i went to the waist measurement as well to draft the waist measurement the waist measurement i'm going to be using is 33.5 i added um, two inches sewing allowance for the lining and half an inch sewing allowance for the dart and marked it so after doing this now i'm going to take my ruler now and connect the dots So I've connected the dots now. I'm now going to take my scissors and trace out this pattern. So after trimming out um, the pattern, I went on to flip that cutter part and then flip the, um, the pattern over. I mean that area, that part of the wing collar and picked my short ruler now to define um, the slant. So I picked my short ruler now to define the slant from that opening that I'd created from the shoulder and then marked it out. After doing that, I picked my scissors now to trace it out. So I've traced this out now and this is what this looks like. This is what the pattern looks like. But then for me, I want to um, rework this area. I want it to have more fabric. Um, so I'm going to be adding my brown paper to this and I'm going to be using my paper tape for the extension to secure the extension that I want to create. I want it to be wider than what I have marked out now. So I'm going to be, I'm going to um, be I'm adding more paper to this with the paper tape. I'm going to use it to secure the the um, extension on the front and on the back of this another way for you to avoid this is to um, ensure that you have more room upwards so rather than use four inches upwards at the beginning of this um, pattern you can um, perhaps use 10 inches upwards so that you can have enough room upwards to cut this pattern based on how much you desire the v to be so i have um sealed that part now i'm now going to flip this over and use the paper tape to seal the front part of this so i've sealed it now i'm now going to pick my um short ruler now and create the um, extended pattern that i want for this part of the um, pattern 
So I'm using my pen tool now to draw out what I want this to turn out to be or the pattern that I want to um, recreate for this um, wing collar. Remember this wing collar is one-sided, it's not flipping from the center to both sides of the, um, of the, of the blouse. It's just one-sided and that's why this is, um, we're using this method. So I have marked this now, I'm now going to pick up my scissors to trace out the pattern. So this is a pattern now, this is what it looks like. I'm going to flip this over um, so that you can see um, what this um, pattern looks like. So now I'm going to transfer this to the lining and the main fabric and cut out. I've transferred this same pattern to the fabric and I'm going to also cut out. I decided to cut the lining first because the fabric that I'm working with is stretchy. But then working with this method will ensure that I get the accurate measurement on the main fabric um, and avoid any excess or errors. So when cutting the lining, I made sure that I doubled the lining because the fabric I'm working with is very light and uh, it stretches. I decided to use double lining so that I can get the thickness that I want. If you're already working with a thick fabric, you may not need to double the lining. Um, if you're working with a light fabric, you could also decide to line with gum stay to give it texture. But then I decided not to line mine with gum stay because I just wanted this texture that I'm working with already. So I'm showing you with my hands the parts that I'm going to be joining um, before flipping over. So after sewing that part, now I picked up my scissors to open up that part um, so that it's easy for me when I turn it in. You can see what I'm doing with my scissors. I first cut it straight and then um, open up um, both sides of um, the fabric. I'm doing like a V cut there so that it's easy for me to open up. I'm showing you what I did with that. And I'm using my scissors now to cut out that excess. So after doing this, I'm going to um, sew the sides as well and then flip this over. I picked up my scissors also to cut out the excesses on the joining so that when I um, flip this over, it's as, as flat as possible. So after flipping over, I picked up my scissors to um, make the pointy area pointed. I'm going to also sew the back of this fabric, of this blouse. And then I'm going to proceed to the ironing table to iron, but first let's join the back. I've joined the back now and so I'm going to the iron butter iron. And then I'm back on the machine to sew the darts and then also connect the fabric, both the front and the back. Connected the shoulders and connected the sides. After connecting, I'm going to now fix the sleeves and then take to the ironing board to so iron and to also fix the peplum blouse. And here you have it. This is it. This is your wing color. This is your wing color blouse. I'm going to be spicing up um, the color with applics and pearls so that this pops up and um, looks very very lovely and voila this is it your one-sided wing collar blouse one-sided wing collar peplum blouse if you want to learn more about how to create a peplum blouse just like this you can leave it down below in the comment section and i will be creating that tutorial video for you i mean this is not lovely this is just pure bliss not the pure bliss biscuit but then this is very lovely very very lovely you can watch my other tutorial videos like how to create a bustier pattern how to cut and sew a corset dress how to sew bubble with drawstrings or how i transformed an old men's shirt to a lovely underbust dress do not forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already um like comment share to your contact list or groups or community Thank you for watching. Keep, keep creating magic. It's Sense Nightingale.